All right, guys, it's D-Day. We're gonna build the Predator motor. I have everything uh, somewhat organized, laid out on the bench here. It kind of looks like a hodgepodge, uh, but I have pretty much everything out here together. Everything is clean, ready to go. There are some things that are not here yet. We still don't have our valve seat springs, but hopefully by the time we get to the top end, we will have those. They should probably be in the mail tomorrow. And then I also have my cylinder on the way. That is the stock cylinder. We've got a 560 big work kit coming, but all of our parts are laid out pretty organized. Like I said, everything is nice and clean. Over here, I have the old crank. I have our case half that we're going to get started working on. Of course, I've got our climber service manual right here. And of course, we've got the dead blow. You need the BFH, right? So I wasn't originally intending on doing a Polaris 500 entire build video, uh, you know, on the quad itself and especially not the motor. However, I feel like this is uh, my, it's like my duty to do this. One, because I've seen in the comments, a whole bunch of people are asking, they wanted to see this video. And two, because... You've probably seen in the comments, you probably, if you're in the sport, sport ATV world, you know the Polaris Predator is kind of like known for being a little bit of an oddball. And while the engine itself is not that difficult to work on, and I don't think it's a bad design, like the engineering that I see is, there's actually some good stuff in here, but the, the oddities of differences from year to year that I've kind of got a grasp on and uh, just the availability of parts can make these things, working on these things, kind of a nightmare and waiting for parts even more of a nightmare. So I just felt like it was my duty to kind of help you out with this and, you know, walk you guys through the process. Plus, I know a lot of you guys just like to watch me building motors and seeing them come together. And before I get started, I want to make a disclaimer here. For those that are new to the channel or don't know who I am, maybe you're not subscribed. My name is Mike Sabo. I do motor builds on ATVs and dirt bikes. I'm not a professional technician. I did not go to school for any of this stuff. Um, this is all things that I've learned through experience over time. I would consider myself a junior engine builder, still getting my feet wet as far as the performance aspect of motor builds go. But as far as assembly goes, I'm pretty damn good at it. So keep that in mind as you're watching these videos. This is meant to be a reference for people putting their motors together that might need a little helping hand and you know some things can be really confusing when you're looking at manuals and stuff and i'm sure i'm gonna have my struggles too and hopefully this will help you with that and also don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if this video helps you out and hit that subscribe button if you like what you see and hit that notification bell all right let's get started All right, so we're gonna get started by putting the crank in. We have the left side case half right here. Now this is a 2007. I believe this is the only year where they had a ball bearing like this on both sides of the crank. So I actually have uh, an older generation. I believe this is 03 to 05. You can see that's got a roller bearing in there. And the cases are actually quite a bit different. So if your bottom end does not look like mine, keep that in account. However, a lot of the stuff is gonna be very similar processes. Now here is the crankshaft that came out of this quad. This was a blown crank. See the rod bearing is totally shot. We're not gonna be using this crank, but there are some differences in the crank as well. So if you see some differences there, or if you're buying used parts for your Predator, it's definitely something to be aware of. Uh, I have noticed quite a few differences, uh, even these spleens. Uh, they're a different length on the other crank that we're going to be putting in. Hopefully, I, th I think that will still work, but there's a gear that goes on here. You can see it right here. This is the gear for, I believe, the 03 to 05. It's a smaller gear for, this goes on your crank, it's pressed on, it actually goes on the other side. This is responsible for spinning your counterbalancer, which goes up here. Now, they changed the size of the gear for 07. Why? I don't know, but it's something to be aware of. So if you're buying a used crank, it might not fit or you might have to get the, take this gear off and then press your other gear on, which is honestly a pain in the ass. Not everybody can do it. It was a struggle for me too, but that's something to be aware of. So I believe this crank is a sweat fit, which means it's going to be tight. It's not just gonna drop right in place. So what we're gonna do is heat up the bearing, which will expand it. And I've already got the crank in the freezer. It's been there overnight. That will help contract that. And hopefully it'll pop right into place. We won't even have to mess with using the pole. So we're using map gas here. It's a little, it gets a little bit hotter than propane. Just gonna heat this bearing up, get it to expand. All right, here's our crank fresh out of the freezer. You can see we've got the gear pressed on there already. Major pain in the ass that was. And I did true and weld this crank. This is the first one that I did myself. And what we're gonna be doing is just popping it right in place. You wanna make sure that you have the tapered side going in. You don't wanna put the wrong side in. Oh, look at that. It went right in. No work at all. 
You've got to be kidding me. Oh my God, are you serious? What the hell? Are you serious? I can't f***ing believe this. <laughs> Un-f***ing believable. Un-f***ing believable. You want to make sure your rod is facing up. There we go. Popped right in. Easy work. All right, guys, now we're going to put our counterbalancer in. There are punch marks that you need to line up. Now you'll notice mine is a little bit different. That's because I had to remove and replace this gear and it was one tooth off when I aligned it. This thing is a pain in the ass to get off and press back on, so it wasn't worth it to me. I just marked the new spot here. I etched it there, so hopefully the next person who has this apart will understand. I actually wrote a line here on there. So that's why mine will be one dot off, but typically they will be lined up perfectly. And I am using some Maxima assembly lube as I put this motor together. I wanna make sure I use a lot of assembly lube on this one, especially because I didn't replace the bearings. Get our crank lined up. If everything's lined up properly, it should spin nice and freely. All right, next is gonna come our reverse gear shaft and reverse gear. So there's a little dowel pin on here. You wanna make sure that that's in place. It only sticks out of one side and it's gonna go in place right here. You wanna make sure that it bottoms all the way out. And of course, you wanna make sure that there's a little layer of oil on all these parts as you're putting them in. All right, now we're to get the transmission in. We're gonna take our counter shaft. This is gonna go through right here. I've already lubricated everything. And we have a washer that goes on the back here. And we're gonna slide this in place. You wanna make sure that this is fully seated and that your counter shaft is sticking out the other side. Now we're gonna take our main shaft. This is one piece unless you disassemble it yourself. Uh, there's no washer or anything that goes on either side when you're putting this in. So this will just pop right into place. The main shaft. Now we'll put first gear on. We've got a washer, an oil sleeve, our gear, and then another washer on top. Now we're gonna put our shift forks in. These are all labeled. MC is the middle, L is left, R is right. The left and right are for the orientation as if you were sitting on the quad looking straight ahead. So this is the left side of the motor. The left one will go in first. I've already put some lube on the use. Definitely don't wanna put these in dry. That's what she said. So you just slide this into the appropriate groove. You might have to play with it a little bit. Transmission can be a little finicky. Definitely something to take your time with and not rush because it can be frustrating. Now we got the right side that goes on the top. And then the MC is the middle. It's gonna go on our main shaft. And this piece I had already put in, this is the reverse shaft. Just goes right here, pops in place. Now on the opposite side where this reverse shaft comes through the case, there's a washer, a clip, a spring, and an actuation arm to activate reverse. You wanna make sure all of these pegs for the shift fork and everything moved out to the side. And now we can take our shift drum. You wanna make sure that this is nice and lubricated. On the 05 Plus, you have one pin on this side that's fixed. There's another pin that goes in this side and there's a spring that goes behind that. We're not gonna put that in right now because we're going face down and it's probably gonna pop out. You can get it from the other side of the case once the center cases are put together. So we'll go ahead and put this in place and then line up our shift forks. Now we have our shift shafts. These will go into place. I believe in any orientation, there's one and two. And there's a spring that goes in the top of both. Once everything's together, you just wanna make sure everything spins freely. I'm grabbing the counter shaft right now, just making sure nothing is binding up. And I do have it in the neutral position, which is right about here. And they want you to put the reverse lever up. All right, we're getting ready to put the other case half on, but we got a couple things we got to do here quick. Uh, we have your oil, or oil screen. That's going to go down here. I'm going to put a little bit of lube on it because pulling it out, it got stuck. But this was a dry, dry case when I got it. So just put a little oil on there and that slides right into place. There's also two dowel pins that are going to go in this case. I like to put a little bit of anti-seize on them. Pulling these things out were a freaking nightmare. Every single 
pin was seized in these cases because this was not done. Just a little bit of anti-seize and pop those in place. Now we're gonna put our case sealer on here so that we can put our case halves together. I'm gonna to use Yamabon 6B. You guys know me, man. I use Yamabon on everything. Uh, but in the manual, they, they call for 3-bond 1215. Yamabon 6B is 3-bond 1215. So this is gonna work perfectly. I like to put it on both halves, and then uh, you'll see I'll go around and kind of dab it. That kind of makes it spread nice and evenly and doesn't leave any thin spots. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we'll put the cases together. All right, now these cases should go on. In the manual, it says you shouldn't have to apply force. If it doesn't go all the way down though, that's okay. We have a crank installation tool. You may have to spin your water pump gear because it fits into the counterbalancer. Now guys, this is a sweat fit on this side of the case as well, so I need to use a crankcase puller. Unfortunately, mine didn't fit, so I had to get creative and make my own. However, I found a Motion Pro crankcase puller that should work, and I'll link that in the description below. And from the other side of the engine, we're gonna run our crankcase bolts in. Put a little bit of Loctite on these if you want for right now. I'm just gonna run them in so that the case is pulled together. And I'm just gonna pull these in in a crisscross pattern, and I have my impact gun set pretty low. This has adjustments on it. Okay, so now we're on the clutch side of the engine. We're gonna put our oil scavenger in. Put a little bit of lube in there. And we have our inner scavenger right here. There is a dowel pin. You can see how that fits into place. Now there are two small dowels that go in the bottom and in the top. And we have the housing base. I'll line them up like so. And we've got another dowel pin that goes in this shaft right here. An oil rotor goes on top, lines up with that dowel pin. Another outer rotor, and then the top of our housing. You might have to spin your rotor to get it to, there we go, to seat on there. And we got three bolts here. Then we have a gear that sits on top. It is notched, so you can't put it in the wrong orientation. And a C-clip to hold that in place. All right, now we're gonna put our shift mechanism in place. I'm gonna try to give you guys a good visual here, but it can be kind of difficult. We're gonna put our shift cam in. You can see there's a little cutout right there that goes right where the pin is. Line that up, it goes right in place. I just have a very tiny amount of Loctite on here. Close this in. Now we have our shift detent spring, and then we have our shift detent, and we have a little shoulder bolt here that goes through like so. Just to drop a Loctite on here. I would use blue if you have it on hand. I just don't have it right now. Now keep in mind guys, this is different from the 03, 04 to the 05 and up. This is the 05 and up version. We have our shift pawls right here. They're gonna go in place on our shift cam. And there is a little top hat here. You wanna make sure that that's located out here. And we have our shift shift. Lube this up. You wanna make sure this is lined up with the little top hat. And we're in place. Before we put the basket on, we're gonna slide our rear chain slider in. Cannot get to this once the basket is installed. So we have a sleeve right here. It's gonna go on first. Now we can put our basket on. And there's a washer that goes back here. And then our inner hub. 
All right, now we have one more washer that goes here. And now I'm gonna put red Loctite on here. I prefer red Loctite over the locking washers and also over the peening method, which is the way that these come from the factory. I don't know if you can see the little dent right there, but that's from it being peened. Now I usually use an impact gun. You guys that follow me probably know that, but I just got these new Tusk clutch, holder, clutch holders. It's like a set of vice grips. Get them in there, clamp it down. Doesn't need to be super tight because the basket is really not that strong. Doesn't need to be crimped down. You can crush this. So we're good right there. And then we're gonna tighten this down to 75 foot pounds. And we have our timing chain gear right here. This can only be put on one way. You can see there's a punch mark right there that faces outward. And there is a double spleen right here that matches up on the shaft in only one orientation. So you can't mess it up. Before we put the primary drive gear on, we're gonna drop in a brand new timing chain. Some people were giving me a lot of crap for not getting a new chain. So I got a brand new timing chain. And we've got our primary drive gear, just like with the uh, timing chain gear, there is a double spleen in here. Just gotta make sure that's lined up. And with the clutch basket too. Sometimes you gotta play with it. There we go. And we have a washer. And I like to red Loctite this. And if you're going to torque this, I'd go to 75 foot pounds. As for me, I'm gonna snap it on with the impact. And that should be good. All right, now we have to wait till our clutch components get here before we can continue on this side. And we also don't have our water pump gasket because the gaskets I just learned are different from 03 to 04 and then the 05 to 07. So this is an 05 to 07 bottom end and I had the wrong gaskets. So the uh, stator side luckily is the same. So we can continue moving on with the stator side. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put our starter in. So I've already tested this, make sure it works. Got a new O-ring on here. We take a little bit of dielectric grease, rub it around our O-ring just to keep it nice and lubricated. You don't want the O-ring pinching off. It's gonna go through this hole right here and just go easy with it until that O-ring pops in place. And we've got two bolts in the back. All right, starter's on. All right, guys, now we're gonna move into putting our flywheel and starter clutch assembly on. Now this portion of the crank and flywheel is another one of those critical areas where there's differences from the 03, 04 to 05 and 07 models. So you'll see on this crank inside here, there are threads. Now on the 03 to 04, if you're an 03, 04 guy, you're gonna have a nut that's gonna go on here and that backs right up against this bearing. Now, if you're 05 to 07, instead of the nut, you're gonna get this washer. It's a big, thick spacer. Now, normally the crank will be smooth. You won't have these threads and the washer will just slip right on there and go up against your crank bearing like so. Now, this wouldn't fit before, but I opened mine up just slightly so that I could fit over these threads and it fits perfectly. So it's gonna work just fine for me, but that's something to take note of. So if you're 03, 04, you're gonna have the nut. If you're 05 to 07, you're gonna have this spacer. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that in place. Now we've got our flywheel here. You can see I have shaved the weight. Actually, John from Stupid Fest did. Took some holes out in the back. This is 0.2 pounds lighter than OEM. So for what I'm doing with this build, that's what I want. You can see the shaved down areas and stuff. I also advanced the timing on this thing. And then we have our starter gear here. And that is going to mate in here. And you can see it should only go one way. You can spin freely this way, but not the other way. That's what you want. If it's if it's uh, moving in both directions, you know, I mean, you might need a new starter clutch. Now, when you put this on, you have your little keyway in here, and then you have a keyway on your crank. Now, this is important because a lot of predator guys were telling me in the comments that it's really common for a predator to shear the woodruff key on your crankshaft. And then your engine goes out of time, you know, your, your flywheel spins and everything, and that can lead to a whole mess of problems. So this is really critical that you do this. Uh, from what I understand, and just from what I know about, you know, tapered shafts in general, it's really important that you have a good mating surface between the inside of your flywheel 
and the taper portion of your crank. So what you can do, especially if you have a different crank and flywheel, like it wasn't the OEM ones that you pulled off, you're using mismatched parts, you wanna make sure that the taper is exactly the same. So what I use is a little bit of a valve grinding compound, a glapping compound. You put it on your crankshaft, then you put, put a little bit on the inside of your flywheel put it on there and you rub back and forth, you'll hear like a gritty sound. And what that does is it mates these surfaces so that they're, they've are they got the exact same taper. That's a trick that a lot of snowmobile guys use with their primary and secondary clutches on the taper shafts that don't, they're not even keyed usually. So they need it to be a super tight fit. So if you don't have a perfectly seated flywheel and there's any kind of like gaps or anything, that's when you're more likely to shear one of your woodruff keys. The other thing I wanted to show you guys is this is the OEM key right here. It's rounded, little half moon. And here is key that I'm putting in. This one is square and it's a little beefier than the OEM one. So we should have good results here. You wanna make sure your keyways are nice and clean too. So you know that your key is sitting all the way in there. All right, with our key in there, we've got a bearing that goes in place. Put our starter gear in and our flywheel. Oh yeah. We've got a washer that goes on here. A little bit of red Loctite. Spin our nut on. Now the flywheel gets tightened to 110 foot pounds to keep the crank from rotating. I'm gonna put a steel bar through our rod. It's definitely a little easier to do if you have somebody helping you or if the bottom end is in the frame and you have some leverage. So now we have our starter drive and driven gear. You have a shaft that goes into place with a gear on it. And you have another one right here. Shaft, I've already got these lubed up. And just kind of get this in place, there we go. Give it a spin, make sure everything moves nice and easy. And we're ready to put our stator cover on. You can see it's got the stator mounted on the inside. There's our pickup already surfaced all of the engine cases so we should have no problem with leaks or anything we've got two dowel pins one down here one up here i put a little bit of anti-seize on these so that when it comes time to remove them they don't get seized i'm gonna put a fresh gasket in place what i'm doing right here is greasing the gasket this way when it comes time to take this thing apart it's going to save the person from the arduous task of getting crappy old gasket material off. It also helps with sealing as well. We'll hang this in place on our dowels. Like so now we will put our cover in place, kind of get sucked on there with the magnetism. You just want to make sure your pins and everything line up for your gears. You want to get all of your bolts in place before you tighten them down. Make sure your gasket's lined up. Otherwise, if you start tightening it down, you might have a gasket hole that's not lined up perfectly and you got to take it off again and I'll just tighten these down by hand if you're gonna torque them go in a crisscross pattern and I take these down to about seven and a half or eight foot pounds and while we're in this area I'm gonna put our neutral switch in it's gonna go right here there's a little hole here that's for the spring goes in place and there's a pin that goes on top of that here's the actual switch got a new o-ring on there put a little dielectric on it and just like with any other o-ring just ease it in there so you don't shear it off all right man now let's get to the good stuff this is our brand new 105.5 millimeter cylinder. It is Nicosil coated. This will bring us to 560 cc's. This thing is absolutely beautiful. I believe this is an OEM cylinder, BP Racing. I think they are the only place you can get these things. I, uh, I had comments of people saying like, don't run the 560 kit, the sleeves drop. Well, this isn't even a sleeved cylinder. So they must've done sleeves in the past. I don't know if BP did that or somebody whoever was doing 560 kits before was sleeving them and they were i guess they were prone to issues well like i said this is a nicocell coated cylinder this should be very durable they've got our cp piston right here i believe this is 12 and a half to uh 12.5 to 1 compression ratio 
beautiful billet piston. I've already got my rings on here in the correct orientation. You want to make sure that your ring gaps are in opposite directions. You usually will have um, something that comes with your piston, whether it's a Wiseco, OEM, or you can use the service manual. It'll tell you exactly where to put those rings. I'm not going to go over that in this video. I did check my ring gaps. I had to open them up just slightly, but we're all good to go now. So we can go ahead and put this piston on. All right, first things first, you want to make sure your piston's in the right orientation. Our exhaust valves are smaller, so that will be this way. Make sure we got lube for our piston pin. Now these Carrillo clips, I hate putting these things in. They're great clips, they're super, super sturdy. I've never used another aftermarket brand that has clips this sturdy. But the problem is there's just, there's like no flex to them. They're really difficult and getting them in can sometimes be a massive pain in the ass. <laughs> so just bear with me here and let's see if we can get it in okay. The other side I already put in, I like to do that first before I put the piston on because it's a little easier and manageable when you can hold the piston. This one can be a little bit more of a pain in the ass. You wanna to try to get the opening towards the top or the bottom so that with um, the, the force of the piston going up and down, it could actually crimp these, the piston clip. Although I've, it's very rare that that, that that happens. It's still a possibility. So it's just a rule of thumb to keep them up or facing down. All right, by the graces of God, if I can do this. Not too bad. You wanna make sure that ring is completely seated in there because otherwise it will pop out. We've got two dowels that are gonna go in for our cylinder and I seize them up, put them in place. We've got our Comatic base gasket we're gonna put in place. I'm gonna run your timing chain through the opening and we're going to be installing this dry. Now it's a good time to double check your ring gaps. Make sure that they're all in the correct orientation before you put your cylinder on. I'm gonna lube up the cylinder. We'll get our cylinder in place here. And make sure you walk your chain slider through the opening. All right, we're gonna continue with the top end, put our chain slider in place, make sure it's in the appropriate grooves, put our Cometic head gasket in place, and we'll put our cylinder head in place. Put a little bit of anti-seize on our cylinder head bolts, slide these in place. Now, while I use the OEM studs in this video, BP Racing does offer kibble white heavy duty studs. I highly recommend these for any high performance engine build. Unfortunately, I didn't have the parts in time for this video, but I did swap them out afterwards. If you have the funds for these, I highly recommend them. You can pick them up on bpracingatv.com. Link will be in the description below. All right, now there's a tightening sequence for these head bolts. This can be a little cumbersome if you don't have a person handy to give you a hand, you know, holding the motor while you tighten these down, it can be a little bit difficult. So what I like to do is take an extension or a steel rod, put it through the swing arm bolt area, and it kind of gives you some leverage to hold the motor from uh, tweaking. Also, if the motor's in the frame, you're gonna have more leverage because it's actually bolted to something. So you can just go ahead and wrench away and not have to worry about the motor spinning. So I like to do it on the bench though, but uh, it's gonna be a little cumbersome. We're gonna do in this, we're gonna go in a sequence. Uh, the first pass is gonna be 22 foot pounds. And the next pass is gonna be 52 foot pounds. Now, according to the manual, they want you to let the head sit like this for one minute. That's gonna let the gasket set. Then we're gonna do one full revolution in reverse on each bolt. Now we will tighten to 26 foot pounds. I'm gonna go to 28 because we're going high compression here. So I like to give it just a little bit of extra. Then they want you to turn it one half turn tighter in quarter turn passes. So we're gonna go quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, 
and then do that again. So it'll be one half turn beyond 26 foot pounds. Kind of confusing, weird pattern they have there, but that's how they want you to do it. All right, now we're gonna move into installing the cams. So we have two different sets of cams here. This is a set of hot cams. These are stage one. I believe these are the only stage of cams offered by hot cams for the Predator. Now, I was originally planning on running these. Uh, BP Racing sent the entire kit to me. However, after looking at the specs of the lift and duration on these cams, I don't think these are going to be optimal for the type of power that I'm trying to make. I wanna build a top end machine and based on like the lift and duration, like I said, this will probably add a little bit more torque and grunt to the motor, but it's going to sign off earlier in the upper RPMs than it would with the OEM cams. So this would be, this would probably be better for, you know, woods or motocross, maybe uh, something where you really need to get out of the hole, like constantly. But since we're trying to build something with a lot of top speed, more for like drag racing kind of stuff, I think the OEM cams are going to, we'll still have plenty of low end grunt. And I think these are just gonna work a little bit better. We might experiment with these after, but for now we're gonna run these. All right, the first thing you wanna do is rotate the engine to top dead center. You can do that from this side using your little inspection windows. You can get a, a wrench right on your flywheel and then there's an inspection window that'll show you where the flywheel is lined up. You wanna be at top dead center and you wanna go in a counterclockwise fashion. And I like to hold tension on my timing chain so that it doesn't bind up. All right, we're gonna move into putting our shims and shim buckets on. I'm not gonna go in depth on showing how to shim your valves for the Predator. However, it's just like doing any other 450 or any other shimmed motor. Essentially, you've got these little shims. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a number on there. That's the thickness of these things. What you do is you get a shim kit and you put shims in here. And uh, when you put the shim in, then you put the bucket on top. This is one of the buckets right here. And the thicker the shim, the higher the bucket sits up. So then your cam lobes rest right on top of these shim buckets. So what you wanna do is get the right clearance between the shim bucket and your cam lobe. So if it's too tight, you put a smaller shim in, that'll bring the bucket down and open up your clearance and vice versa. So I'm gonna go ahead and get mine all set up. You can see I did put some assembly lube in here. You wanna make sure everything is good and lubed up for the camshafts. All right, now we're gonna put our intake camshaft in. You can see there are two punch marks. You want these aligned at the nine o'clock position here and then 12 o'clock position here and make sure your engine's at top dead center as well. Now we'll put our exhaust cam in place. All right, you wanna double check your top dead center and this is about where you wanna be with the cams. You can see you have both punch marks on both cams. The top one is at 12 and then these other ones are at the nine o'clock position. You'll notice that the exhaust cam is slightly rotated to the right. According to the manual, that is how it's supposed to be. You can see the intake side is level at zero degrees with the cylinder head. And then on the exhaust side, there's about a seven degree drop. So right about there, we should be good. Now we're getting ready to put our cam cap on. Before we do that, we have these two little bearing stays. They go right in these little slots, right on your cam bearing. Just make sure that they're in place. Put our cam cap in place. There are two dowels. You wanna make sure that they're both in place. We got eight bolts. Now I'm just gonna snug these because I have a pretty good feel for this. But if you're gonna to torque them, go to about eight foot pounds. I'm gonna double check our clearances one last time. Now we're gonna put our timing chain tensioner in. Got a new gasket right here, just greased it up, put that in place. And I put a little bit of assembly lube on the plunger. So it's just like any other tensioner with a flat head, you can spin the tensioner and wind it in place. That'll depress it. We'll go ahead and get it in place. And once you have them brought in, you can release the tension. Snug those down. And then there's a little plug that goes in the back here. And if your tensioner worked properly, you'll see that your timing chain is nice and tight up here. Now what I like to do is rotate my engine over in a counterclockwise direction and just make sure that there's no binding or anything like that. All right, now we're gonna put our cam cover gasket on. 
take a little bit of RTV and put it where the half moon shapes go. Now we can put the gasket in place. I did put some dielectric grease on the edges of this thing. That just helps keep the rubber in good shape and it also helps with sealing. Now we'll put our cam cover on. I just coated this in some wrinkle black paint and we've got four bolts with rubber washers that go up here. Now I'm gonna put my intake boot on. I've already surfaced both this and my head, and I've also port matched this so that we have a perfect transition going from the boot into the casting for the cylinder head. Now I'm surprised there's no gasket or O-ring that goes on here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of Yamabon 6B on here just to make sure we don't get any intake leaks. Now we can come around this side and put our inspection plugs in. These just get snugged up. They really don't need to be very tight. All right, guys, good news. We got our clutch pack in the mail. I've got it in this plastic bag soaking in oil. It's probably been soaking for about five hours. Also got the discs right here. I am reusing the discs that came out of the quad. They look to be in pretty good shape. I scuffed them up on the surfacing board just to make sure that they have a good uh, gripping surface. Now we're gonna go ahead and put these in. If you're doing an OEM clutch, you're gonna notice this half plate. And by half plate, I mean, if you look at the thickness of the plate, it's about half of what the of what this plate is. Now that's supposed to make it for, you know, ease, like smooth clutch pull and, you know, just like a good feeling. It's on a lot of factory quads. There's usually like a judder spring that goes in there, which is like a big washer that's got um, a spring to it. And then you put that uh, half, um, half plate in there, and then you stack the rest of the clutch pack with the normal discs. Now on all my quads, I like to do what's called the full fiber mod, where you get rid of the half one, and then you just do full fibers because a clutch is only as strong as its weakest link. So that's why I like to do this. So we're just gonna alternate back and forth between fibers and plates. It's up to you if you wanna face the sharp edge or the rounded edge leading. It doesn't really make a difference, even if you mix them up. Then this last friction fiber is gonna go in between in these other grooves like this. So all the other ones go in the regular groove, top plate, our disc goes in this uh, in-between groove. Now we'll put our clutch pusher rod in, put some lube on it as we slide that into place. On the back side of the engine, we'll put our clutch actuator in place. And on this side, there is a clutch cable holder that goes in place of this one bolt. I had just put this in place so that we could tighten our cases up. Now we'll install the lifter piece. Then we'll put our pressure plate in place. We're gonna make sure that this sits nice and flush against the top fiber in your clutch pack. And now we'll run our springs in place. You gotta be really careful with these. This is an impact gun. These things are great, man. These, uh, these small Milwaukee uh, impact guns, man, they have little adjustments on the back. Number one is only a few foot pounds of torque. You're not gonna break any of these things off and it just makes your life a lot easier. But if you're not using this, you wanna be careful. These things really do not need to be tight. It's really easy to snap off the, uh, the little studs in here. All right, we'll just go around, make sure these are all nice and snug. If you're gonna torque these, go to about eight foot pounds. All right, the new gaskets came in the mail. So we have the appropriate gasket for the 05 to 07 bottom end. These are Namura gaskets, and I gotta say, they're really good quality. You know, I have four gasket kits at this point for this 
machine and uh, I would say that these are probably the best feeling gaskets just throwing that out there now on the other gaskets I put the film of grease on them now unfortunately this portion of the case was really messed up and I did surface it I also surfaced our case cover but just for extra measure I'm gonna spray this down with a little bit of gasket tack so that way if there are any uneven surfaces that'll take care of it I don't think we'd have a problem but we might as well just take that extra measure While that's getting tacky, I'm gonna put our two dowel pins in place. Got one in the back and one in the front. Now I'll put our cover on. There is a seal that goes in this cover. I did replace that. Then we'll run our bolts in in a crisscross pattern. Again, if you're gonna torque these, go to eight foot pounds. Just gonna give them the good old snug test. Now we'll put our new oil filter in. We have a spring that goes in first. Then we have the oil filter cover. I have a new gasket on here and I also put some dielectric grease on there. That'll help seal it. Here is our brand new Tusk oil filter. You can put this uh, in with some oil around the lip and then it will sit right on here and hold in place. And then you can put this right on. Now we can put the water pump cover on. Got our fresh gasket right here. Put a little bit of grease on there. Stick that in place. You can put the cover on. And with all these covers, just wanna go in a crisscross kind of pattern. And this bottom one is the drain. That one will get a brand new copper washer. Now the last thing we're gonna put in is the oil one-way check valve. It's located on the front of the engine, just below the water pump, and it looks like a drain plug right here. Got a new copper washer on the back, and there is a plunger that will go in first. Get some lube on there and put the plunger in. And there's a spring that goes in the back. And then your plug and your drain washer. Right, guys thanks for watching the video if you do decide to tackle your own engine remember to take your time and if you get confused refer to your service manual if you got any value out of this video or you just enjoyed it please leave me a thumbs up and leave a comment below and consider hitting that subscribe button these videos are not easy to make and that helps me out big time i also want to take a moment to thank the companies that help make this build possible rockymountainatv.com and bpracingatv.com links to products parts and tools will be listed in the description below as well as in the pinned comment all right guys until the next one peace out